Knurling is the undisputed, in my opinion, in the modern era, as a strength historian that I am, Knurling is the undisputed uh, diamond of the modern era of lifting. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I mean, I mean, as far as Knurling goes, like the way that I view having things that are knurled, um, you know, with the dip attachment or whatever, a lot of people when it first came out, it was why why would you need knurling on a dip attachment handle? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not really gripping it, you're just kind of, but you, you know, when you understand feedback from the hands, you know, when you're when you're holding on to something, that that base is where it, where everything's coming from, you know, mm -hmm. and if if you don't feel confident in your grip on something, whether it's a it could be a bench, it'll be a squat. You know, anybody that's done a lot of squatting knows is if you if your hands something feels off at your hands, yeah, you might as well just re rack the bar because something bad's gonna happen. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, you you have to have a good solid connection to whatever you're using, and that has to be giving your brain some feedback saying you know this is okay to grip. Um, there's a lot of deadlift bars out right now that are super super aggressive and i don't understand that at all because it's inhibitory and it's not my thing um, yeah yeah you know, they're super thin um and the neural is really sharp when you make a bar thinner the sharper the neural feels mm -hmm. um and we take a lot of people will say that our neural is really aggressive and really sharp um but you know it is it is aggressive from a traditional standpoint but it's a small neural um, and the whole idea behind it is to be able to grab hold of it and it produce as much friction with your hand sure. as it can without yeah, yeah. telling you to let it go. So, well, plus I think I'm not saying I'll never go into my gym and just bang out some dips, but in my training, most likely I'm going to have some main lifts mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do dips. So that means I'm probably going to be sweaty by the time I get to them. And that's where I think, like, I don't want some slick handles that I'm going to slip off of, or even right. powder coats gets a little, little slick after a while. And I'm probably doing a couple sets of dips. Um, so unless I'm really putting on a belt and doing weighted dips, I'm doing, you know, 10, 12 right. or so, three or four sets of that. And, yeah, I, I want something I can hang on to. So mm -hmm. that's where the foam handles made me laugh. Like, oh, they're going to be all nasty and moldy and sweaty after a while. It's that, foam. I mean, and and some then, companies uh, are getting that too. You see yeah. neural on everything now. Yeah. You know, bench handles. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, things sure. that don't, you know, to most people probably don't even really require neural, but it's just that well, it's, crossed it's over aesthetically the, the pleasing. It. Yeah. It's, you know, it, yeah. it matches People just like else. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It feels good, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. but I like uh, I like the differences in knurling. Um, you know, I mentioned to you before we were on camera, Primal Armor, mm -hmm. and how uh, they were able to just set aside one of their Appalachian bars so I could get it um, just raw steel, not coated with anything. But something that I wasn't expecting that I really loved was the knurling they have on it because it's uh, it's tighter and smaller, but it has uh, just a nice grip for squatting because of that it's not aggressive it's not chewing mm -hmm. up my hands but because of the tight kind of nature it i don't it's just it's like a sponge it like sucks right. your hand in and i if that I makes think, sense you i know? think the way you have to look at neural too is the trend seems to be bigger and bigger neural uh -huh. volcano yeah yeah um you know these, these huge peak neurals it it's like laying on a bed of nails <laughs> you know if yeah that's if true. the nails are huge and they're far apart they're gonna hurt a lot more than if they're small yeah. and they're really close together. I mean, so I have uh, generation one, two, and three Texas Power Bars that I've collected, and part of the reason I stuck with them was I like the knurling. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like the um, you know the three bears. You know, it's not too aggressive, right. it's not too passive. It's just it's right there. And you could and manufacturers achieve that in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. The first way is to not make a complete neural, which is what a volcano neural is. It's yeah. you know. It's a pressured neural where you're not bringing it to a full peak. So you make a little gully at the peak of the neural and you get that volcano neural. Or you, you know, make the neural smaller, which is what I think everybody should be doing instead of just making incomplete neurals. Humongous, yeah. um, and I actually, when I was, it's funny because when I, when I was doing my neuraling, 
um, and trying to figure out what type of neural wheels to use. Mm -hmm. um, I actually sat down and did math on like surface area nice. to how, you know. Yeah, yeah. And later confirmed it using like chat GPT to help with some of the math. On That's it. great. And you got AI crunching but, the numbers. Yeah, I mean, when you have when you have a pyramid, mm -hmm. if you cut the top off of a pyramid, that 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 surface at the top is never going to be more than what you cut off of it. Makes sense. So, you know, the the sum of the sides surface area is always going to be more than just the base. Okay. And so you're removing surface area when you don't complete the neural. The problem is if you use a large neural and it's peaked, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so use smaller, complete neurals that are well deburred, and you'll have very functional neural that doesn't hurt your hands. So how long did you mention on the tour video that I put out before this podcast? We showed like the very first kind of project you worked on that uh, tempering roller, and right away you said, "Oh, the neural's horrible. Neural, mm -hmm. The neuraling's crap on this." So. How far or how long, how many trial and error kind of projects did it take to kind of dial it in to the point that you're like, hey, I think I got something here? I mean, it's gotten progressively better since you started to. The first, the first neurals that I put out when I finally started getting okay at neuraling um, were very sharp. And some, some guys like that and will look for those handles, you know, sure. and try to buy them from people because they're, <laughs> they're super sharp. They want, the, um, they want the aggressive early right. mutant metals. Yeah. Um, but it took, it took a lot of different, um, a lot of different tries. And the reason is there's not a lot of good information out on like, you know, I'm, I'm not a machinist. I had to teach myself how to do all the machining. Yeah. So, and there's not a lot of good information about how to produce neural. It's mm. usually with a traditional bump style tool that comes into the piece and displaces the metal. Um, which is what we do kind of, but I ended up having to make a custom tool to get it to work with that lathe um, to take pressure off of it. And, you know, it took four different tool iterations just to get something that holds the wheels the way that I want them. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably knurled a couple hundred things before it was, you know, the way I, the way I really liked it. Um, that's awesome. Well, that's the, I mean, I think that's, I'm not saying it's awesome that you had to keep trying and trying and trying, but I think it's cool to get a little background. Um, you know, when I'm doing dips on my UDA and I feel that knurling or anyone out there that buys your stuff to get that background that, you know, this wasn't by happenstance. This wasn't like, well, I guess I'll set it this way and this is what comes out. Like mm -hmm. you were started was, like that. There's a lot of yeah. trial and error. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of like, you know, just tweaking this and dialing this in. Even <laughs> like you said, crunching the numbers, doing the math, mm -hmm. uh, figuring out all the different dimensions, like you said, of a pyramid and the base being this. So uh, that's all really cool. Thanks so mm -hmm. much, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Thanks for having me.